shows up. He said, we haven't played good offense since game one. We hope to see it tonight, Brad. Dan Crawford threw it up. The ball has come to the Nets, and we're underway. Bob Delaney and Ron Garrettson, the other officials tonight. Here's Kenyon Martin. Jefferson with a tip. Well, when you don't shoot well, it's always nice to get easy buckets. I firmly believe the Nets going to have a chance tonight. Not only going to have to shoot well, but how they're going to have to shoot well. When you get an open shot and it's your shot, take it. Don't pass it up and shoot something more difficult later on in the shot clock. Amazingly enough, the rebounds have been dead even in this series. Jackson lost it on the dribble. Nets have a chance to go up five if that goes, and it does. Great start for Jason Kidd, as in game five, where he started the first half four for four, started the second half five for six. It was finishing the half. It was the major problem for Kidd. So a 5-0 hole, and Jackson, who turned it over, takes a bad shot there. Here come the Nets on the run. It's Kittles. Missed it, and Robinson's there for the rebound. Well, this has been their quarter. The Nets have had the first quarter. Other than that, they've really struggled. So it's nothing new for the Spurs to get behind or the Nets to be up in the first. It's the second quarter that's been the nightmare. Two games that they've won, they have played well in the second quarter. Duncan gives it up to Bowen. Bowen weaving through traffic up over Collins. Tipped. And loose ball out of bounds to San Antonio. Greg Popovich, the message to his team coming in tonight, play within the system. We're not looking for any heroes here. How do we win? We win with our constant defense, which leads to control of the board, but don't forget to play on the offensive end and get it to Duncan. And Tim, Tim Duncan, your charge is to shoot every time you touch it tonight. And an errant pass, and so Jackson's made two mistakes in taking a bad shot, and that has been a recurring thing. Well, and Ginobili quickly up off the bench. This might be the quickest substitution in the history of the NBA Finals. <laughs> it's coming pretty early, that's for sure. Ginobili will have to wait as the Nets lead 5-0 in the opening minute 45. Kenyon Martin over Duncan. Duncan will clear off the miss. We'll see if they can get some easy buckets coming back. Realize this. I know they've lost one game at home. Ah! But they are shooting 49% for the two games they played at home. So David Robinson off the dish from Parker makes it 5-2. Byron Scott telling us that he's, he's been so disappointed with the team's closeout defense. They're just allowing guys to waltz their way to the hoop. Jefferson penetrates and gives it to Collins. Block shot inside. Robinson pulls it down. I think I'd give a half to Duncan, half to Robinson there. I'm good with that. Tony Parker looking for a pick from Duncan, gives it right back to him. And now Tim driving on Kenyon Martin and got it. We have seen literally every shot imaginable in this series from Tim Duncan. Is there anything you can do? How do you guard a guy that skilled, that versatile, that complete? So the Nets score five straight. Now back-to-back -back buckets makes it a one-point ball game. Martin faces Duncan. Too much standing around. And another shot blocked inside. Yeah, hey, you can't get in the mode of just dumping and standing around. Someone has to cut. You want to move? Go ahead and feel free to set a screen away from the ball. Four the seconds on the shot clock as Bowen will inbound. Martin going to have to hurry. A runner, and he got it. He looks so much better than he did in game five on Friday night. A completely different ball player. I, he won't be coming out at the four-minute mark of this game. Tony Parker, nice screen, and his teardrop drops. Parker's first basket. You know, I saw in the second half of last game, the shoulder squared up a little bit, the chin was up a little bit more, and he looked like the player that started this series. Had three great games to start, and then a terrible one he'd like to forget. Kenyon Martin, top of the circle, got another one. So Martin, as Bill said, fresh, healthy, and he gives, again, the Nets a three-point lead. Another defensive adjustment for Byron Scott. Kerry Kittles on Tony Parker as much as possible. Ginobili airballed one, same spot that he could have won one of the ball games earlier in this series from. Kenyon Martin off very strong, moving beautifully without the ball. No hesitation whatsoever. The Nets have to accept the fact they're not going to score at the rim. 
They've got to pull up and make those mid-range jumpers, not the strong part of their game. Martin's already got as many points as he had the whole ball game last time around. Jason Kidd outside, and he airballs a three to Duncan, who's waiting on the weak side for it. Love the way Duncan drives it out himself. Shoot the ball, Tim. I think he would love to play point guard for one game. So I'm out here shooting threes before the game. All, all big guys want to be little guys every once in a while. Robinson, big sweeping hook. Kittles with a rebound. I think Duncan is the point guard if you define the point guard as the playmaker. And the leader. There's no doubt he's both of those things. Martin feeling it. Not this time, though. And David Robinson with a rebound. I like that look, though. If that's your shot and you're open, let it fly. Parker he almost walked with it. And three-second violation. So San Antonio turns it over for the third time. You talked to about the offensive explosion by Kenyon Martin early here. That four-point output in game five was the lowest point production for Kenyon Martin since February 5th, a game you and I did in Philadelphia when he had to leave yeah. that game early with a knee injury. Kid trying to get it into Collins. He has not been an offensive threat. That's kind of why. And as just a second-year player, Jason Collins, who's made vast strides, will have to develop that short little 12-foot jumper to help his squad down the road. Almost halfway through the quarter, we haven't seen a foul yet. And Tim Duncan's got his second basket off the glass. Nice-looking shot. These games, the experience of the NBA Finals, besides teaching you how hard it is to win the title, how rough and fast these final finals games go. Jefferson hangs in the air, and R.J. knocks it down. He's got four. Well, he goes up in the air. You start coming down, he stays up That's in the right. air. That's how high he can get. And we've got a timeout taken by Greg Popovich. as a mature adult and trying to become the 11th person in the history of the NBA to win a championship both as a player and a head coach. Byron Scott has become Pat Riley, the ultimate testament. You saw in those mannerisms, one guy had the right hand on the chin, one had the left. Keep in mind, one guy was left-handed. Here's a rebound by Kittles and the outlet to Jason Kidd. Well, you look at what happened, what's happened so far in this game and why the Nets have been able to take a lead. Go back to game two, the game that they won here. They had 15 more shots in the Spurs and forced the Spurs into 21 turnovers. Right now, four more shots in the Spurs, three TOs. And Collins inside. Jason scoring for the first time and makes it a five-point ball game again. This is the highest level of basketball that we've attained in the series to date. It has taken to game six to come anywhere close to this level. Are they just getting warmed up? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Parker. Why did they wait so long? Bowen gave up a three. Got his man in the air and missed the shot in close. Well, they're doing a great job of closing out on him. Make him bounce it and try to score off the dribble. Not as effective. He's trying to get back to get on Kittles, and Kittles feeds Collins again. They're finally realizing, New Jersey, that the big men are coming every time. The lead swells to seven at the five-minute mark first quarter. 6-0 run now by the Nets. Offensive foul away from the ball. David Robinson trying to set a screen. The penetration is, is, is just killing the San Antonio Spurs here. David Robinson, first foul of the game as we check in with Stuart Scott, Stu. Well, Brad, you know Jason Collins has to have a nickname. It's the right of all young players. It could be little Jason. Jason Kidd's on his team. So they simply call him Twin. You know, his twin brother, Jerron, played with him in college. It's that simple. Twin does this, twin does that. They never call him Jason Collins. It's always twin, Brad. They probably call Jaron the same thing in Utah. <laughs> Kid missed the shot. Malik Rose, who just checked in, has got his first rebound. I want to know which one's Schwarzenegger, which one's DeVito. <laughs> Jaron and his parents, Paul and Portia, have been at all the games of this NBA Finals. And now we got another foul. This one's going to be on Terry Kittles. Well, the thing the Nets have done so well here in the first half of the first quarter is being aggressive, driving, penetrating, finding those seams that we talked about, and then kicking off to other players instead of being stagnant to standing around. Tim Duncan's been very good from the line the last two games, and he rips that one. Log on to the NBA store on NBA.com right now and pre-order the official 2003 NBA Finals DVD.
Love it live on NBA.com. In our pregame meeting with Greg Popovich tonight, he was telling us about Tim Duncan and how he's the most coachable player he has ever come across. How he'll come in, Tim Duncan, and request films of his own game, request films of his opponents. The constant discussions that they have about how to play basketball. He even, Tim Duncan, requested films, old game films of Kevin McHale to improve his offensive repertoire. And boy, has that ever paid off. He has learned well and continues to get better game in and game out. Ron Garrison said, hey, that was my fault. Ball's going the other way initially. Out of bounds to the Spurs. They give it back to the Nets and correct themselves. Jason Kidd. Here's Steven Jackson back in there with a rebound. See what he does with it. Ginobili fouled by Jason Kidd. You know, and just to get back to the officiating, I know usually we only point them out when they do something bad. But I love the fact when they can sit there and say, you know what, my bad. Let me go ahead and correct that. And a nice job of Jackson pushing the ball. When you push the ball, good things happen. Ginobili picking it strong. Ginobili's first point. Ginobili double figures in the last two games at 12 in game five, 10 in game four. Lucius Harris checking in right now for Kittles. He's the guy that needs to get going. Yeah. The entire bench for New Jersey. The discrepancy in bench play has been huge in this series. Never more evident than in game five. One of two free throws by Ginobili makes it 15 to 10. Nets. Kid taking Parker to the baseline and brings it way back outside of Jefferson. Five on the shot clock. Jefferson will go deep. Got it. Just inside the three-point line. That's a little deeper than Jefferson usually shoots, but with a shot clock winding down, he buries it, and it's a seven-point game again. Well, those shots are always fun to take because you have to shoot it. I couldn't pass it to you. It's winding down. Tony Parker, his offense not on so far, and Jefferson way up there for the rebound. Jefferson's going to be open in transition here. Kid from 16, and he knocks it down. I'm telling you, he is so much better on those shots of transition. You Just pointed that out the other night. You're right. I, I would take more if I were him. When he gets to the half court, then I try to set people up. But, boy, let it fly. Spurs are approaching three and a half minutes without a field goal. And that one doesn't go either. But Duncan will take another, and he knocks it in. Where would the Spurs be without Tim Duncan? Certainly Probably not, not in this series. <laughs> That's for sure. Jeez. <laughs> Think they might be drafting in the top 13, top 13 in a couple weeks? That's maintaining the lead on the road. Tough place to play with this crowd. Oh, Kenyon Martin waited for a call from the official. Oh. Now he shoves Malik Rose. And Bob Delaney says, what are you doing, Kenyon? Just because you didn't get the call. And, and fortunately, Byron Scott quickly calls a timeout to put things back under control. Losing your mind, Kmart. What is going on out here? Still the Nets lead by seven. Duncan with Martin on him. Spurs moving around the perimeter. Jackson will take a three in and out. But you know, th those passes aren't right on the money. <laughs> And you see something they haven't been able to do in the previous five games they're doing tonight is the perimeter shooting six for 13, right around 50%. If that can, if that can keep up, they're going to be in great shape. Well, how long is that going to last, though? Well, instead of a clip. Jefferson, nice feed inside to Williams, but Tim Duncan has blocked his third shot of the quarter. Everybody's talking about the inept offense of the New Jersey Nets. This is a fine offense. They're playing against one of the great defenses of all time. Ginobili, tough travels inside and got hip checked by Aaron Williams. Well, this may be a fine offense, but certainly isn't a fine offense in this series. And you look oh. right here, Duncan. I mean, these guys are tremendous defenders. There is no question about that. But Ginobili right here hitting the seam and just taking one on the hip and getting himself to the free throw line. But with Ginobili, two out of three from the stripe as we check in with Michelle Tafoya. Brad, during the last huddle, Greg Popovich reminding his team how well they close out periods. He wanted him to use these last couple of minutes to do that, but he reminded them to slow down on offense, play with some calmness, make some stops, rebound, and he even said, don't forget to have fun, Brad. They'd like to get 20 points in a first quarter. They still got a long ways to go with 138 remaining in the first, but as Michelle mentioned, the other night, had they not closed out every quarter, they might have lost that ball game to the Nets, but they did close out in fine fashion in the first, second, third, and fourth. 
And here's the zone defense for the first time of the night for San Antonio. Foul on the entry pass inside, and it's going to be on Ginobili. Byron Scott telling us before the game that the pregame adjustments were all about attacking that zone defense, figuring out what they're going to do, what the strategy is, try to get something going at that foul line area, the critical offensive zone. And Jackson got a hand on the ball, but it's Jefferson. Malik Rose blocked the shot. Nets get it back. Now Ginobili almost strips Jefferson. New shot clock. Jefferson just trying to force one up there. Here's the outlet to Ginobili if he can track it down. <laughs> Tony Parker's wide open at the three-point line. Byron Scott cannot believe that Richard Jefferson is not going to the free-throw line. Jefferson can't believe it either. Let's take a look at it on his last drive. There's the first one. That looks like a foul to me. Like a little skin there. Uh, you, know, you get hit in the back on the yeah. side and in the head by Malik Rose. I think his sec second entry yeah. into the lane was worse. Yeah. Well, Adam, up. Adam up. It should have been one foul. And this is the second one going right down the middle of the lane. He lost the ball. Yeah, that yeah. one he did lose. That one he lost the ball. I think he got hit on the arm after he lost the ball. Ginobili struggled Whoa. from the free throw line <laughs> mightily. <laughs> three out of six and not even close on the three he missed. You know you're in trouble when you're racing over the line on your own free throw <laughs> miss <laughs> and get the rebound. And to pick up the violation yeah. as well. Sound like you speak from experience. Oh, and there's a technical on Byron Scott. He oh, never let it. up and Dan Crawford hit him with it just now. So Malik Rose will step up to shoot the technical. Byron Scott's in a different position than Greg Popovich is. Greg Popovich and Jerry Sloan of the Utah Jazz always lead the NBA in technical fouls per season because his players don't argue back. Byron Scott, he's got players that will argue that will get technicals. But you have to protect your guys going to the hoop. Here's Harris inside and Duncan. This time it's a foul. He got the ball, but he also got some of Harris. This is a shot blocking clinic by Tim Duncan, David Robinson when he's in. These guys, San Antonio, they're playing tight. Greg Popovich got to do something to loosen them up. More offense for Tim Duncan. Anthony Johnson in there with Williams and Jefferson. Jefferson has an open look, and he knocked it <laughs> off the backboard. I don't think he called that one. Excuse me? Jefferson oh, with eight. Man. And the lead again is eight. <laughs> if that were pool, they would have taken the white ball and put it back. I say, so, you know, like, we, can't, we yeah. can't have that. I know we had to put a buck in this machine, but we can't have that. Duncan wants it down low. 21 seconds left. Nice. The feed to Jackson as he slices through the lane. Which just begs the question, why don't they give it to Tim Duncan every time down? Zone defense to close the quarter for San Antonio. 23 17 six seconds left Kenyon Martin long range Jefferson hammers at home and that's the problem with zone defense there's no box out responsibilities and again the Spurs for six straight games it's never happened before don't score 20 points in a quarter but the Nets did in fact they scored 25. I think things are changing now. San Antonio starting to come alive. Duncan blocks another shot. He's just set the record in the first half. <laughs> He's got five. <laughs> but Jason Kidd has not had a good second quarter. The Nets as a team have 13 points. That has been their Achilles heel, the New Jersey Nets, in this entire playoff series. Jason Kidd's doing what he did the other night. Great first and third quarter and nothing in the second and in the fourth. He hasn't taken a shot in 12 minutes, game clockwise. Look at David Robinson's defense. Jefferson trying to save it, goes halfway in the tunnel. Greg Popovich trying to encourage Tony Parker, but it's just not there for him. You know, it looks he, like the Nets have come out and said, we're going down, let's go down firing. Yeah. Let's just go down, we'll go out there, have fun. Let's take some shots, see if we can make some shots, but let's not be hesitant. That's why it's easier to play and coach as the underdog. A foul inside as Bowen and Jefferson getting separated right now 
by Dan Crawford. And let's check in with Michelle. Brad, in the last huddle, Greg Popovich asked Tim Duncan specifically to be more authoritative with his post moves. And on defense, guys, they are going to press a little bit more now, trying to change the tempo of this game. Back to you. We'll take a look at that with 2.26 remaining. Popovich, the coach of the year. Byron Scott, who's done a remarkable job in the three years he's been with the Nets. There's the Jefferson Bowen collision that led to the whistle. And Dan Crawford still talking to both of them, saying, OK, guys, now let's just play. Good. You know, Good. Walk right across the lane. You, you, you want to come up and bump, guys. If you're going to win on the road, you've got to play like that. It's not dirty play. It's just good, tough, physical basketball. Ginobili driving inside and missed the hook. Kenyon Martin clears it to Kidd. Make a layup, please. Got a Kittles hit the last one from there. That one's in and out. That's perfect. Fresh well, clock, though, for the Nets. I guess you probably have to make it for it to be perfect, but I like that shot off the break. Under two minutes now in the second quarter. Nice double team, Robinson. Kid, he'll take a three. Duncan made a pass at him, or he might have hit it, and now it's Tony Parker, the rebound. Duncan's in front. He didn't see him in time. <laughs> now he got it to him off the glass, in and out. Duncan, second chance. The Nets squandering golden opportunities. 38-34. Final 90 seconds of the second quarter. But Warren and Jefferson are just having a nice little battle down there. Kenyon Martin That's collides in an offensive foul against David Robinson. So Kenyon Martin driving inside. Robinson held his ground, and that's two on Kenyon. Oh, and he gets the ball on that right wing. He loves that one bounce left and tries to get to the middle, and Robinson beat him to the spot. And Byron Scott is quickly getting Kenyon Martin out of there so he doesn't pick up his third foul before the half. So Williams comes in for Martin. Spurs down four, a chance to cut further into the Nets' lead that at one point was 10. Nice pass. Robinson from Duncan. They play so well together on both ends. The interchange, the high-low, they come in the defensive end. Uh, one guy swipes low and blocks a shot. Second time they've cut the lead to a deuce. We're under a minute. Kidd missed the jumper. Ginobili the rebound. Chance for the Spurs to tie or lead. Duncan in the low block for the tie. Got it! <laughs> Tied for the first time tonight. Seven on the shot clock. Jefferson almost had it stripped. Kidd for three. Big shot for Jason Kidd. Right back to 41-38, New Jersey. Final 15 seconds, first half. Parker, Bowen, Robinson, Duncan, and Ginobili on the floor for San Antonio. They'll try to tie it at halftime. Parker, he'll be the man. Nope, it's Bowen for the lead at the break. In and out. Had an open three. That's his spot, but he missed it. This is one of those games where you're better off being behind at the half, playing at home. You listen to your coach a lot more clearly in this circumstance. He said, but we picked up our aggressiveness on defense in the second quarter and got things under control. Not the possession he wanted right there, Brad. No doubt a turnover and a Kerry Kittles layup on the other end. A great start for the Nets to open up the third quarter. And that's the 11th turnover of the night for San Antonio. They're playing far too tight. Parker, Bowen, Ginobili, Rose have got to come alive. The extra pass, Duncan to Robinson. And Tim Duncan is working on a quadruple yeah. double. 
Two things to look for in the second half. Can the Nets get more field goal attempts once again in the second half? And can they hold the turnovers to a minimum while forcing San Antonio into 10 more? Kittles fadeaway jumper on the baseline. Rebound is Duncan. Boy, got to be able to hit those. Those are ones when you have open 15 footers, you got to find a way to be able to put those down, and usually he does. Tony Parker's been a very quiet performer offensively tonight. Here's Duncan. Oh. The lead for Robinson again, and this time he's fouled by Collins. This is about pace. The numbers are starting to swing seriously toward the Spurs. The ball movement, which killed him on the first play, which led to the turnover where Kerry Kittles converted in transition. The ability to draw three defenders and just lay it off with the left hand. What big man in the history of the NBA could ever do something like that? And virtually a carbon copy play. Robinson delivering, feeding off the creator, Tim Duncan. Possibly playing his final game. If the Spurs win this game, it would be the end of David Robinson's brilliant career. He missed the second free throw, but he's had a good ball game. Nine points. When I asked Greg Popovich about the fact that Robinson was right at the very end of the line here, that he didn't have to tell him anything special. Robinson knows it all. But Popovich gets the sense that David Robinson has been counting down the days himself. And he gets the miss of Jefferson's. Well, that was just a wild shot, but he's one of the guys, Richard Jefferson, that got him off early with his aggressiveness. San Antonio's tied it once in the ball game. This for the lead. The rebound is Collins off the backside. Will it get loud in here if they ever do take the lead? I got a feeling it might. Here's Kenyon Martin facing Duncan. The hook, got it. Well, that, <laughs> he makes that look easy. Uh, that's a tough shot. He's doing it very quickly. But that's classic offensive theory. Fake one way, come back in the other, and get in the air and deliver. Jackson will try another. This one he knocks down. Jackson, Jackson with eight. They're putting up very good numbers, shooting a high percentage. Good decision-making by and large. Would like to see him feed the post a little more. Kid looking to feed the post to Jefferson. Comes out to Kittles, who's wide open for three, and he hit it. Harry Kittles, his second three-pointer of the night. Well, Bruce Bowen knew it, too. He slapped his hands together. And that's the one guy that you can't let get, your, get his feet set on the nets because he can square up and hit those shots. Tony Parker out to Bowen for a triple. Duncan got him. Tried to get the rebound, but Kenyon Martin did. Jason Kidd on the break. And a collision, and he's fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line. Can't run underneath, guys. In a game of this magnitude, Jason Kidd comes up limping. Oh, it's Bowen that sees him and out. Great outlet pass right there. And yeah, he's in the circle, he's moving, he's sliding all over the place. And that's, a, that's a dangerous play, but give, Jackson, the, give the credit to Kenyon Martin on that one. Jackson actually tried to catch him after the foul, and as Bill said, Kidd got up gingerly limping. And remember, he sprained that ankle in the Detroit series, and it's really never been 100% since. Well, why do you even have that thought cross your mind that you're going to run underneath somebody and flop down? Be a defender. Either get in the air and try to make a play or let him go. Jason Kidd got them both. The game is the Nets by seven. Isn't this game kind of similar to last game in reverse, where every oh. time the Spurs go within two, it goes back to seven or eight? Kittles with a steal. And... Tony Parker having a struggling night again, and we might see Speedy Claxton pretty quickly. And that's the decision of the night for Greg Popovich. Because Parker, this is not his finest hour at all. He's basically giving up the ball to the longer, leaner Kerry Kittle so quick. And this defensive adjustment by Byron Scott has paid huge dividends. Parker not having a strong game. Kittle's with 11 points now, and six quickly in this third quarter for Kerry. Parker one for two shooting does have a couple of assists Kittle's got them both 7-0 run for Byron Scott's Nets and they lead 52-43 now Let's see if San Antonio can get something going offensively you want to get it number 21's hands and he has it right now right back to Jackson and he stepped on the baseline Duncan's passing 
And he's just watching the defenders all the time. He knows exactly what his offensive guys are going to do. Three turnovers by the Spurs already in this third quarter. And the whole team. Hey, you like the body language from the New Jersey Nets. You like the way when they're open, they're firing shots and defensively, Kenyon Martin. Now, that, that foul's okay. If you're going to pick up a foul, be it a foul where you're battling, and you're battling for position, not trying to poke balls away. That's the one you'll live with. And he's just right here. I'm not going to let you get this position. Fronting, three-quarter inside. And that's a foul. That's okay. That's a physical tough foul. But he gives Duncan so many different looks, constantly bumping him, and bumping him and then stepping off. Now it's Collins on Duncan. Kid trying to help out. Robinson keeps it alive. Robinson and Duncan, the only Spurs playing with a darn. Parker normally would have taken the shot from the outside. Instead, he tries to penetrate and misses. Oh, what hand. What a feed to Jefferson. Oh, oh. And a chance for a three-point play as he lays it in, and Ginobili got it. From the days I first laid eyes on Richard Jefferson as a college freshman down in Tucson, Arizona, you could just marvel in awe at the athleticism. The natural talent, the ability to just run and jump faster and higher than anyone else. And now the polished game, the decision making, the mid-range jumpers, the ability to handle the ball. In this series, you've seen the guy come to the fore with his physical play. Rod Thorne, the identification in the draft, the trade. 13 now for Jefferson as he completes the three-point play. And it's troubled times for the San Antonio Spurs with 8.02 remaining in the third quarter. They have dominated previous opponents, Celtics and Pistons, on the fast break game. Not so with the Spurs, but tonight, a 9-0 run in this third quarter on the fast break has given a very comfortable lead to the Nets. And, Tom, somebody's got to come to the forefront now for the Spurs as a score. Well, yeah, right now, Tony Parker, I think, has got to be a little more... Oh, that wasn't what you were going to say. No, it, you know, rise, that's a shot, you know, a week ago, he rises up and he takes it. You know, he comes off that and he rises up and takes it. And the turnovers, you know, that was a story in game two when the Nets won in San Antonio. 21 turnovers, and right now they're on pace for more than that. Not a recipe for winning. Kenyon Martin returns on the baseline. Robinson went up and helped Duncan get that rebound. Tony Parker is trying to become the second youngest player in NBA history Boom, playing on it. a winning title squad. There's more about what we were talking about. Magic Johnson being the youngest ever. Your guy goes under the screen, you take that shot. It's that simple. Only the second field goal for Parker. The lead is 10 for the Nets as we approach seven minutes in the third quarter. Nice dribble handoff by Collins. Back out to Kenyon Martin. Tim Duncan snatches down the rebound, the outlet to Parker. Who's running with him, though? He'll try to do it himself. Travel. He traveled. Bob Delaney right on the call. Easy play to see. 15 turnovers, five this quarter. And when you've got 19 field goals, 15 turnovers, that's not the kind of ratio you want on scoring against turnovers. Well, when you're not a big running team, sometimes you don't get everybody to run with you. You should always run. Kittles. I don't know if that was considered a shot attempt, but it's Duncan that's, that knocked it out of there. That's absolutely a block shot. And then he's got six in my book for the night. So the inbounds will be Kenyon Martin. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Kenyon gets it into Jason Kidd. Parker up tight on him. Kidd gives it back to Martin with one on the clock. Missed the shot, and Robinson clears off the rebound. Well, Not that really a three-point shooter, Kenyon Martin. <laughs> He's hit one in the course of the playoffs, but not that one. Parker spinning inside, and it's blocked by Collins. Here comes Kidd and Kittles. Kittles all the way. What a great job by Kittles. Shielding Duncan with the body and the ability to finish with the left hand. That was not an easy shot. I thought the look back at Jason Kidd, the trail man, really froze Tim Duncan. Again, it's a 12-point ball game. Duncan gives it up to Jackson. Ginobili had a three and gave it up. 
lot of hesitation for San Antonio on everybody's part. Again, showing their major weakness, the inability to play as the favorite. Parker Whoa, he in is trouble really in traveling. traffic. The follow in there by Robinson. <laughs> Double cram. Well, just throw it up there in that situation. You got everybody lunging at the little point guard. Nobody's staying at home to box out. Guard. Canyon Mar uh, Red. Richard Jeffers, excuse me, with the foul. New Jersey is arguing that he was inside the arc. That rule does not apply in this situation here. He's outside the arc anyway. Speedy Claxton in now as Tony Parker's struggles continue. So Ginobili, Claxton, Jackson, Duncan, and Robinson on the floor for the Spurs. We approach the five-minute mark of the third quarter. New Jersey leading by 10. Duncan trying to get it to Robinson and can't find the opening. Tim will take the outside shot and got it. Duncan's first basket of the quarter from the outside. He's got 16 points. Well, you just can't, you can't give him anything. You let him get a clean look. It's amazing. But Somebody might want to come over and help him. Jefferson, nice feed inside, blocked shot as Kenyon Martin went to the rack. And oh. now, Bob Delaney in the way of the pass intended for Jackson, and then the Spurs turn it over. Delaney was trying to get out of the way. But that's just the breaks of the yep. game for San Antonio. Crowd, angry, antsy, nasty. Hungry. But right now, they're not getting fed. Their team trails 57-49. Jason Kidd makes it a 10-point game again. Kid with a dozen. So funny how not just in basketball but in sports in general, young players can gain and lose their confidence so quickly. It looked like Parker had it back in the beginning of the game, and right now it looks like that's the furthest thing from the truth. We'll see a New Jersey play some zone right here. Ginobili misses the three. Jefferson way up for the board. Kid oh, crossover, the leave underneath for Collins, but he missed the shot. Now Ginobili looking to run with Duncan. <laughs> and he scores. <laughs> Again, the look back. Byron Scott checking to see if he's got a timeouts left. Instead, he's coming with the Kemby Matumbo. Robinson holding his ground. Offensive foul on Collins. How quickly things turn. Lewis Katz, the owner of the New Jersey Nets, up off his seat. Cannot believe the turn of events. Robinson getting high-fived as he held his ground, took a charge for the second time tonight, and gives the ball back to his team, trailing by eight. Collins with four on the bench now. Matumbo in there. He'll guard Duncan. Not from out there, he won't. And Duncan got another. We are looking at a flawless performance. The Spurs know they don't want to let an opportunity slip away. They don't want to be backed into a seventh game corner on Wednesday night. But the Nets have led the entire game. And the crowd has been up for the last three minutes. There's the numbers. Duncan and Robinson have 17 of the Spurs' last 23 points. A little over three minutes remaining third quarter. Not a tumbo. A lot of standing around. Kenyon Martin missed from the elbow, and Duncan's got another rebound. Both Duncan and Robinson with double-doubles, and in Tim's case, big-time double-doubles. And as Bill said, it might swell to triple-double or quadruple-double before the night's over. Claxton, outside! The speedy got it! Kevin Willis, the first man up off the bench, leading the cheers, 40 years old. So close, he can smell the title. Duncan comes out on Kittles. Martin's open and finally does take it. Yeah. Bad yeah. shot. Matumbo battles for the rebound, though. Well, I'll tell you what. It would have been a good shot. Theater just taking it. 
You don't, you don't hesitate to think about it. As soon as you think about it, you might as well forget about but that's it. That's outside his range, and they're backing off him, begging him to take it. Jefferson with a huge first quarter, gives it up to Martin. And now almost stolen by Claxton. Kittles got a good look and knocked it home. Kerry Kittles is having a good night and a great third quarter. Oh, Seven of his 16 in this quarter. But the set offense for New Jersey looks very ragged. Jason Kidd needs to settle this squad down. Kittles another steal on Claxton and then he's fouled. Well, he's been getting it done on the offensive end and the defensive end. He's really but, had those quick hands yeah. the whole series. The, the decision by Byron Scott to come with Kerry Kittles on their point guard. The second time tonight, he stripped Parker earlier for an easy bucket, and now the strip and the foul. Well, I think sometimes you feel like, hey, I don't have a point guard on me. I'm not going to have to worry about him stripping the ball away from me. Well, with him, you better pay attention. Rodney Rogers will check in for the first time tonight. They have put 22 seconds on the shot clock. 149 remaining on the game clock in the third quarter. And Kenyon Martin comes out. Playing with only three fouls. And had always picked up four fouls in every game pretty much by this point. So they don't want that burden either. Kittles running Ginobili ragged, but he... And it kicks. Well, it looked like it went off Kittles. I for thought it, it did too. Ginobili's trying to sell that case, but Bob well, the Delaney officials aren't going to hear any of it. Very clear on the call. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Jason Kidd way outside. That is a rebound. Duncan another rebound is 14th. <laughs> Directing traffic plays out there <laughs> with the left hand to dribble. Now let's see if he goes at Matumbo. Oh no, not <laughs> the leg. Off the glass and in and out, and Rose keeps it alive. Fresh shot clock. And Claxton looks over to Greg Popovich. Run a lot of time off the top. Let this crowd feed you. Duncan outside. Not this one. And the rebound is Matumbo's tipped over by Kittles. Oh, he's hit a couple of those, but. Tell you what, if, you, if I'm New Jersey, I like seeing him out 19 feet away from the bucket. Whistle, three second violation on the Nets. That's their 10th turnover. Byron Scott, who's tasted the championship three times as a player in his 14 year career, spent mostly with the Lakers. Now in his second finals in back to back years. Swept last year, very much in this one and leading this one throughout the game, trying to force a game seven. You saw Steve Kerr check in, the great three-point shooter. They may go to him before the quarter's over. Six-point ball game. Duncan says, Kerr, when you get it, you got to shoot it, but he won't there. Ginobili will. And knocked out of bounds. And a foul on Duncan. Ginobili got hammered on that shot. Just the whole side of his body was just bumped. Tune in to NBA TV following each finals game. You get complete live post-game coverage, including press conferences, interviews, and analysis. Place to turn for around-the-clock coverage of the finals is NBA TV. Well, the Nets have really done a fantastic job tonight of closing out on shooters. They're not letting them get their feet set and get open looks. They're flying out at them, making them put the ball on the ground, on ground. And a lot of times they're forcing turnovers because of it. But the adjustments that Byron Scott talked about before the game. Kittles on the Spurs point guard. He's been fantastic. Their guards have not done the job. Zone offense, they haven't needed to do anything there because the Spurs inexplicably have not used the zone and then close out and be selective in who you run at. Hitting their free throws, 11 for 11 are the Nets. And Matumbo's two stretch the lead back to 63-55. Oh, wow. Ginobili trying to get around Jefferson, and Jefferson picks up his third. <laughs> and emerging, just grab a guy. But an emerging star, Richard Jefferson. Just getting started in his second year. Both years in the finals. What's going to slow this guy down? Nothing. Ginobili inbounds to Kerr. Nets have a foul to give with 10 seconds on the shot clock. They don't have a foul to give. They just used it. That's right. 
Claxton. And he's bumped by Rodgers. Well, they gave one anyway. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Some, sometimes when you're as big as Rodney Rodgers is, <laughs> Claxton just runs into you, and you can't help but fall backwards if you weigh about 100 pounds less. Claxton at the free throw line and got it. Jason Kidd seven times during the playoffs has hit a basket with three seconds or less left in a quarter. Just about got one there off the front of the iron. Point four remaining to end the third. On the run here for the little guy, Speedy. Ginobili just shot puts that baby down and it's picked off by Jefferson and Matumbo. About an hour and a half ago, I said it was the Nets' gut check time. They've showed they've got guts hooked on to heart. They want it to go to seven. They want to make history, win six and seven on the road and win a title. Can the Spurs close out? They've had trouble with that throughout the playoffs, throughout their history, really. Kerry Kittles had a huge quarter, 11 of his 16 in that third. He's given the Nets the chance they wanted. 63-57, boys, here we go. 12 minutes to determine your fate, your place in history. For the Spurs, so few players playing well. Duncan and Robertson literally by themselves out there. Ginobili, Rose, not getting it done. 26 points combined in game five. Very few tonight. Kid with 10 on the shot clock around Duncan who lunged at him. Off the glass, Jason Kidd. <laughs> that was like the game winner in game two. two. Reminiscent, going left or going right. Runner, who's going to help him, Duncan? Who's going to get some points? Spurs Rose. haven't had a field goal in yeah. over three minutes. Ginobili will try a three. In and out, Duncan, the board. Didn't get the score, though. Nets with a rebound. Here comes Kidd. Can Rodney Rogers deliver for Byron Scott? Jason Kidd will try another off the glass. Back-to-back -back baskets for Jason Kidd. 67-57, leads 10 again. Ginobili, inside, pushed. Well, that's the one you just have to let go, but look at Jason Kidd right here. Strong run. <laughs> oh, man. And then he comes right back and hits the classic jumper off the board. But everything for San Antonio is just an absolute labor right now. Steve Kerr. Here comes Mr. Fourth Quarter. That got the crowd's attention. 67-59. Well, if you're in New Jersey, you better recognize that, too. Kidd will try three in a row. Tipped in by Matumbo. Dikembe's first field goal is a big one. But Byron Scott just using his entire bench here. He's three centers. Rodney Rogers didn't play in the first half. He's come on, played solid. Lucius Harris now in their critical juncture. Laxton gets it to Duncan, who faces... Matumbo. Oh. Duncan scores inside. Big guys aren't supposed to cross over like that. What a master. What a talent. 20 Every for the MVP. Everything right. Turning and facing against a bigger player. Oh, Back. Ginobili with a steal. He picked Jefferson's pocket and stuffed it. Byron Scott's trying to call a timeout here. They can't even hear him. We can barely hear each other. It's down to six. Will the ship come in in the last 944, or will we sail one more night on Wednesday? Tim Duncan trying to become the eighth multiple winner of the finals MVP award. Nine and a half minutes to go. Pass. Ran into some traffic, last touch by the Spurs. Well, if you had told me, game six, championship on the line, nine and a half minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, and these are the ten players that we'd see out on the court <laughs> a week ago, I would have said, whatever. Popovich has got his work cut out for him, and he's going to close this out. Jefferson hangs in the air, missed the baseline jumper. Duncan's got rebound number 16. Great job by Steve Kerr boxing out. Claxton in traffic. 
Ginobili. Trying to give it back to Malik Rose, and Rose lost it. you got to find Steve Kerr. It, that's what he's out there for. Well, they've been able to make this push. They've been able to make the push to get it down to six, get it down to four, but they haven't been able to make that big push to take the lead. Nets working around the perimeter. Lucius Harris, he misses the three. Jason Kidd trying to keep it alive and does. And goes right back to Rodgers in the baseline. And Rodgers hits it. A three for Rodney Rodgers. Popovich coming back with David Robinson in the next dead ball. Rose working on the baseline. And he's fouled. Well, Popovich has got four reserves on the court right now surrounding Tim Duncan. Kid hustling to keep it alive and immediately has his head on a swivel and goes to Rodgers who's open in the corner. Those are killers. When you play good defense, you get a stop, and then you give up an offensive rebound, and then they drill a three on you. Total momentum killer. But at the free throw lines, Malik Rose, who hit a technical free throw shot earlier and hits for only his second point of the night. It was Rodney Rogers' big three at the end of one of the early games in the Milwaukee series that enabled the, the Nets to move on. They appeared dead in the water. Rodney Rogers missed two free throws. The ball came right back to him on the scramble. Slowly, both teams bringing starters back in. Kenyon Martin has just checked back in. David Robinson is waiting at the scorer's table. The biggest decision of the night is for Popovich is going to be Parker or Claxton. Malik Rose hit both free throws. 72-65. The Nets lead by seven. We've got 8-35 left in game six. Rodgers should be able to punish Jackson. Backing him in. Up and under block by Duncan. Of course, Duncan knew that too, so he was waiting for that. Let's see if that stop turns into points for the Spurs. Claxton saw a seam. Ginobili, wide open three. Duncan oh. tried to go back up with it. And here's Jason Kidd again on the run. But what anticipation by Tim Duncan on the offensive glass. Kidd, baseline jumper won't go. Duncan cleans it off again. Duncan's got 17 rebounds. But his team is trailing with under eight minutes to play. You've got to let du Duncan isolate against Matumbo here. Nice. Rose is all alone. They came over to help out. And Duncan, the assist man, finds Rose. And well, Dikembe is just yeah. irate with Rodney Rogers saying, look, let me play him. Eighth assist for Duncan. Kenyon Martin straight away. Too strong. Back of the iron. Jackson the board. A three for 18. He just hasn't been able to buy a bucket tonight. Trying to slice into a five-point lead of the San Antonio Spurs. Ginobili, Jackson, a triple. Got it! If he's not an MVP, he's an MAP, the most admired person in San Antonio. Mom's looking on, Frida. Dad Ambrose is here, and seven minutes left. It's a two-point game. Well, that's what it's going to come down to. Can they score in the half court? Since that 9-0 spurt of fast break points, they've only had two more fast break points since then. Rodgers packs it back inside of Martin. Blocked by Duncan. That's his 31st block shot of this series. That's a new record. Seventh of the game tonight for Duncan. You cannot just go right into his face and throw up weak stuff. Duncan gives it up. Jackson for the first lead. Got it! Jason Kidd tries to quiet the crowd, but it's Duncan with another rebound. Spurs lead for the first time, 73-72. Duncan in traffic. What a pass. Robinson over Matumbo.
Peter Holt looking on as San Antonio leads by three. Where are Kittles and Jefferson for New Jersey? Harris, a runner, he's bumped. The foul will be on Ginobili. The Nets need offense. The 31st block by Tim Duncan. That kind of execution will not get it done by Kenyon Martin. That led to a beautiful arcing three-pointer for the first lead of the night. David Robinson extends that with his relentless work on the offensive glass. Spurs in control and the missed free throws haunting New Jersey. First missed free throw tonight is Harris. There's the NBA Finals record that betters Patrick Ewing in 94. Patrick had 30 block shots, but that was in seven games. This is game six, and it's getting a little loud in here. He missed them both. Well, if they score here, they may want to think about a timeout, because I like to say right now, San Antonio is in full arousal mode. And they have aroused the crowd with a 12-0 run. Claxton outside. He got it! Byron Scott definitely in need of a timeout. It's all falling apart for the next. The Spurs can almost smell it. Speedy Claxton in for the ineffective Tony Parker. His biggest shot of the night. Claxton's had 10 or more points in the finals, 14 straight in the last three and change by the Spurs. And they grasp the lead 77-72. Kenyon Martin didn't get it. Ginobili did. Where is the competitive response from the New Jersey Nets? The ability to score in the set offense. Jason Kidd, Kenyon Martin, Richard Jefferson. That's where the responsibility lies. They've come up empty on their last seven trips, have the Nets offensively. Now it's Duncan back and in. The kick out. Jackson's hit two big threes. He's hit three. You would think <laughs> that they would stay at home on him and leave Claxton or Ginobili open. Aaron Williams trying an outside shot. Jefferson went up high to try yeah. to keep it alive. Speedy is everywhere. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be ironic in a series and you see Jackson right there with another triple in the fourth quarter that's been marred by bad shooting, low scoring quarters, that right now, if the Spurs win this game, it may be because of a monster offensive explosion in the fourth quarter. I didn't think you'd ever say that in this series. <laughs> by Steven Jackson, who was cut by the New Jersey Nets. Gary Kittles that's trying to answer. Robinson pulls it down. That's right. Byron Scott said that he didn't think. Steven Jackson gave enough effort in staying in shape to try to improve himself. He scored over eight points a game the year he was with the Nets and about three rebounds a game. He might come back and haunt him big time. That ball was blocked by Tim Duncan, which would give him eight for the game. Jackson missed that one. Robinson is pushed on the baseline. If that is a block shot by Duncan, check out the numbers, fellas. 20 points, 18 rebounds, 10 assists, and eight block shots if they've added that other one. It's a triple-double, we know. They're soon to make it an eighth block. They call that the old stat stuffer supreme right there. You call that the MVP. <laughs> Speedy Claxton, 10 on the shot clock. We're under four minutes. Claxton trying to weave through traffic. Robinson finds the handle. Claxton before the shot clock. The Spurs lead by 10. 
sounds like team morphine. They are feeling no pain right now. Bravo for New Jersey. They're seriously out of timeouts. Jason Kidd ends a 19-0 run by San Antonio. New Jersey only has one 20-second timeout left. They used three of them in about four minutes and 20 seconds. That's why they're short. And now Greg Popovich will take a timeout. They'll talk things over. The Spurs bench has been huge in this quarter with 12 points. And we're down to three minutes to a possible NBA championship. A second in four years for San Antonio if they can hold on to the lead. This time it's stripped, though. Jason Kidd, the outlet to Kerry Kittles. Ginobili, great transition defense. Kenyon Martin. Ooh. Rebound is Duncan. Well, the one thing with the Spurs, you got to avoid. Missed free throws and, most importantly, turnovers. You can't turn the ball over. That's the way to get New Jersey back in the game. Duncan now with 19 boards. More importantly for San Antonio, they can't get conservative. This game's got a ton of time left. Vote for the NBA Finals MVP brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Gee, who might that be? Just thinking the same thing. Ginobili, the crowd catching its breath momentarily. Claxton. Speedy doesn't get this one, and Kenyon Martin the rebound. Jason Kidd knows time is running out. Goes by Ginobili. Kittles for three. In and out. David. Robinson the rebound. <laughs> Robinson just so good. Really the anchor of the defense. The anchor of this team over 14 years. The Spurs are close. David Robinson who has done it all in his career. The rookie of the year in 90. The defensive player of the year in 92. The MVP of the whole league in 95. A couple of gold medals. And a fairly golden performance. If this is his swan song, he's one hell of a swan. Fitting, isn't it? That a superstar like this, great ambassador for the league, for San Antonio, if they win the championship tonight, doesn't just finish out with meek numbers, comes with a double-double. Missed the free throws, maybe a little tired, and that leaves it open for the Nets. Jason Kidd for three. They have to have that one. It didn't go. It was halfway down. Duncan the rebound. His 20th. He had a 20 rebound plus performance in game one. Now saving his best for the end once again with the MVPs all about. 145 for San Antonio. They lead 82-74. Duncan over Martin. Kenyon Martin with a rebound. You got to push and first good shot you see, you got to take it. A steal by Jackson. They called Wait him out of bounds. Out of bounds. Boy, has he played a whale of a fourth quarter. He's hit three three-pointers, Jackson. And look at the numbers. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Mac. <laughs> See if they're resetting the shot clock, I think, is what the discussion's about. The question is whether he had possession of the ball right. before he stepped out of bounds. They're saying no, so that will not be down to 12. a full reset of the shot clock. So they only get half of it back. Ginobili on Kittles. Trying to set a screen for Kittles and a foul. Steven Jackson. Well, it's fitting. That's his third foul in the fourth quarter that's seen him hit three threes. Nets need points. They need them fast. Ooh, great screen. Williams. Jefferson, he's going to try a three. Oh. Robinson has the rebound. Hey, you might want to think about fouling. They're trying to. And they finally get Speedy Claxton. Does Jefferson. One minute, 11 seconds. An eight-point lead. Look what's in the house. That might be coming out on the court. In 71 seconds. Not over yet. Speedy Claxton has been sensational. 
At the free throw line, Speedy with 12 points in this ball game in relief duty. Make it 13. And they're getting some bubbly ready as well. Everything's covered. What is that? Apple cider, Bill. Hot apple cider. Good Thank for you. you. With some cinnamon? No. <laughs> Missing the second. 83-74. We're down to just over a minute. Jason Kidd. Big shot for Jason Kidd, a three-pointer. Move the ball if you're San Antonio. Don't wait for get a get foul. To under a minute. Kid. And Kidd well. gets Duncan. And you don't have time to really wait and pick and choose. It worked out well for him. But you got to try to stretch this game out as long as possible. Tim Duncan came in with in 10 games in the finals between 99 and tonight, averaging 26 points and 15 rebounds. He's been even better than that tonight. Maybe not with the points, but with everything else. Look at Steve Smith and Kevin Willis. How long have they waited? A long, long time. And that's the last time out for the New Jersey Nets, a 20. Some of the elder statesmen who don't have a title to show for their career. Steve Smith hasn't played, but he's been an integral part of this team, not only this year, but last. Danny Ferry, his dad, part of five championship teams, would be the first Duke player to win an NBA championship. And then Kevin Willis, first finals after 1,342 games making him the oldest guy to make his finals debut and he's thinking about a ring jason kidd had to take the shot the foul will be on kittles with 51 seconds left and of all the guys for san antonio as they celebrate their second championship in five years i'm happiest for kevin willis the guy who has come so far who came into this league out of michigan state 19 years ago and now a chance to be part of something so very special. Steve Smith, who's done so much for Michigan State also in his 12th year, and Danny Ferry in his 13th as Ginobili hits the free throw. Ginobili got them both. 86-77, nine-point lead. Martin will take a three. The rebound. Whistled out of bounds. It'll be to the Nets with 41.8 left. Well, at this point, there could be no discriminating. If you happen to be the player that's wide open for a three, whether you're a three-point shooter or not, it's time to go. Kenyon Martin takes another jumper. Ginobili with a rebound. And Jason Kidd will foul Ginobili. And now the end is near. Jason Kidd, is this the last game we'll see him in that uniform? Everybody's starting to celebrate. Kevin Willis is about to check in. And this place will light up again. Look at the smile on his face, and here comes Steve Smith. The Admiral fighting the final wave. About to come to shore with his second crown. Thirteen points and 17 rebounds for David Robinson. Tim Duncan coming out. I wonder who your MVP is. Ginobili calmly hits the free throw. How about Kevin Willis? He means business. He came in with 35 seconds left and still put his elbow pads on. <laughs> There is no greater feeling <laughs> than what the San Antonio Spurs are feeling right now. It's what you live for. An 11-point lead. Johnson, the miss. Kevin Willis had his hands on the rebound, but Ginobili pulls it down. We're down to the final 20 seconds. San Antonio, a lot of people talked about their 99 title having an asterisk next to it. The 2003 title's about to have an exclamation point next to it. The San Antonio Spurs are your world champions.